Tonight. I guess I'm a pioneer in that I was in the right place at the right time. Did I set out to be a pioneer? I did not. For 40 years, she's been here with you in your living room like family. Our viewers have been as much a part of my life as my own family because they have been there for the births of my children. They've been there for all the big events in my life. A trailblazer, a wife, mother, daughter, and journalist. You have a responsibility to get it right. And if you don't get it right, there are untold consequences as a result. Oklahoma's first lady of broadcast journalism, a living legend marking a milestone. Whatever success that I've had is the result of other people. Oh, my friends, a monumental day here at Oklahoma's News Channel 4. We're celebrating 40 years of my partner, Linda Cavanaugh. Ooh. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kevin Ogle. And I'm Linda Cavanaugh. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> I am so touched by you being here. And thank you, Wes and Natalie. I'm sure you were part of this. We know how much you like chocolate. Oh, so there's chocolate everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> now you guys can have the rest. <laughs> hey, we surprised her. Our friend Linda this afternoon. The staff greeting her with cake, chocolate kisses, a lot of love, hugs, and admiration. 40 years here at News 4, I'm, my friend. I'm still on a little bit of a sugar high. You know, it was, it was pretty nice. And I remember walking in 40 years ago today. Jack Ogle was there, your dad, Ernie Schultz, George Tomic, all the pioneers in television news. And I was so lucky to end up in their midst. Well, that's one of the things I love about you. One of the many, she is very humble, too. Mm, uh, with reason. You have talked to a lot of Oklahomans through these cameras over the years. And it's been such a wonderful, wonderful opportunity because Oklahomans are truly the best people in the world. Well, I mean, won't can, argue that. You can knock them down and they're right back up. And Amen. it's been wonderful to be a part of their stories. Tonight, we got a real special treat for you. We're opening the vault and taking a look back at your groundbreaking career. When I first started at Channel 4, it was a totally different world. We shot on film with Bell & Hal cameras and you had to bring it back to the station to have it processed. We wrote our scripts on typewriters, the old clunky kind. It was a wonderful time as far as I was concerned because it combined everything I loved, photography, writing, meeting people, travel. I never had any intention of anchoring or being in front of the camera. As I was growing up, Channel 4 was the only station that my grandparents watched. And so when it came time to pick a station, that was the only one I knew about. She called me up and said, I'd like to come to work for you. And I thought, great. You know, I've seen her in the past. I know what kind of potential she had and what she could do for us. That's the news for today. Thank you for turning in, and we'll see you tomorrow. It was a transitional age at that time. The newsroom was an all-male bastion, basically. She uh, at Channel 4 and uh, others like her in other markets around the country were really groundbreakers, really pioneers. Did I set out to be a pioneer? I did not. I set out just to do a simple job and it just turned into an opportunity that came at the right time. When women started to be news anchors, first of all, it was okay to be on the early news, but to be taken seriously, you needed to be a man. And then for two women to be anchoring a newscast together was extremely rare in America at the time. Is it okay if we interview you? One of the okay. endearing things about Linda is that what you see on the air is, is truly authentic. You're a sweetheart. There's an emotional intelligence there, and I think it comes through in the way she crafts the stories that she does and the way she interacts with the people she's interviewing. It is just part of her larger gift. You see people who care about the community, people who are willing to give up their time to do it. People see her more... You've lost a tooth. ...as a friend... Where did you lose it? ...than as someone who's telling them the news. <laughs> she is a face that has been in living rooms and family dens for the past 40 plus years. It's not a facade, it's not fake. That's, that's who she is, that's the way she is. She identifies with people. People relate to her because they know 
she's one of us, man. I see a people who can be knocked down, but are raised up by those around them. And I love this state for that. When I think about mom, I think about the word first. And would you still eat it if you could see behind the kitchen doors? And how she was always trying to do new things and was never held back by the fact that it hadn't been done before. And that's a very important quality to have in a broadcast journalist, wanting to be able to tell a story that you haven't heard before. I consider what I do a craft, a privilege, and a responsibility. You have a responsibility to get it right. The idea of breaking new ground has always been important to me because I understand that we influence lives. Our community did not know what hospice was at the time. It stresses the quality of life. Her first early assignment on hospice really opened up a tremendous amount of information to the public. Oh, it was a huge impact when Linda brought the concept to television. They designed the bomb so they would impact the federal building the worst. She was always able to get people to talk to her about pretty much anything. We're steps away from the Hanoi Hilton, home to American prisoners of war. Whenever I worked with Linda, I always felt as if I played up. She elevated the playing field. She expected 110% out of the people that she worked with, but that was only because she was willing to give 120% on her end. That's what sets you apart, being willing to dedicate yourself to something that it stands out from the mediocrity. Her family means more to her than anything else. No exceptions. I would say that probably 95% of our social life revolves around family. They are my core. My mom was successful in family and in work, honestly, because of my dad. When she was at work, their schedules were such that dad could be home with us. I've started to realize just how remarkable it was that she was always mom while she was doing this other thing too that meant so much to so many people. I don't know how she did it, but she always managed to be around. There's a great reflection of how my parents raised me that you see on the air. Are you gonna get out here? My dad's a great human being, and I try to be much like him. His memory is not what it used to be, and when you're 95, I can understand that. We don't make memories anymore, we make moments. That's what I'm looking for, just to make whatever moments I have left with him memorable. One of the endearing qualities of my wife is that she has an excellent sense of humor. To move closer to an agreement. She doesn't allow herself to take things too seriously. <laughs> he met with President Reagan today. We wanted you to have this uh, cake. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Did you uh, get hungry on the way from the newsroom? <laughs> no, we got a discount on this. It was a repossession. And her mind is so fast. She's so quick with the repartee. Me take Iowa. I think it's gas. Tennessee and Alabama. 40 years for anyone in television news is unheard of, especially for a female. Being able to stick it out all this time just shows how talented she is. I grew up in Oklahoma, of course, watching Linda. What little girl interested in journalism has not looked up to Linda? She paved the way for people like me. Out of the break, we'll be up on camera two and effects on Linda. She brings a lifetime of being an Oklahoman to the set. What has always made her remarkable is the way she makes people feel. What I think she brings is professionalism, credibility. My mom is absolutely brave. I think she's the bravest person I know. She proved that it could be done, and it could be done extremely well. I'm just lucky that she was my mom. I hope when all is said and done that someone, someplace, will be able to say, you know, she made a difference and she loved what she was doing, felt privileged to be able to do it and did it the best she could. Oh. Thoughts? That, Tony Stizza did that and I thank him very much. What a great man. And you and Tony have lined your walls with Emmys you've won over the years. But you know, it was never for the awards. It was just doing the stories about Oklahomans 
that was just such a pleasure. Because you love telling a story. I do love Oklahomans, yes. We'll be back. This is when we usually have sports, but I want to throw in my congratulations to Linda as well tonight because she certainly made her mark on our sports department. <laughs> For years, the one thing I was consistently asked about was Linda's football predictions with Bob Berry Sr. Oh, he was so much fun. And I'll tell you the truth. The reason he asked me to do them is because he thought he could beat me. Well, of course. I know. And <laughs> it was just beginner's luck, and it really irritated him. The first three or four years, I beat him every year. <laughs> and you would always try to come up with certain themes or whatever, yeah. and if it was Halloween time, of the season, we'd have Halloween. Take a look. Welcome to the top four and one more. Halloween week, here we go. Now let's change your names for Halloween. Yeah, week. what do you have in mind? Uh, I'm Bob Burry, and you're Linda Cadavern, <laughs> <laughs> which means you're deadbeat. <laughs> Only someone gravely ill could have thought hey. of that. <laughs> I love doing those with him. He was so fun. Well, and of course, he did OSU and OU football games. Uh -huh. and for a time there in the uh, early 90s, he was doing OU, so he got some help from the OU football coach at the I time. I needed some help from the OU football <laughs> Take a look. Look, you won last week by 100%. I'll just call perhaps an uncle, a little help right. for an uncle. All right, and okay. Notre Dame and Michigan is the, is the game. <laughs> uh, Unc, which one do you think? Let me tell you what to do. Michigan will beat Notre Dame. Uh, uh, Bob's, I mean, he's a fool. He'll go for Notre Dame in a heartbeat. But take <laughs> Michigan, and I tell you what, we need to get one up on him. We can't have this anymore now, Linda. All right? All right, Linda. Th thanks, thanks, Unc. Yeah. Uh, See you at Christmas. I'll Michigan. take Notre Dame. I, yeah, Michigan. I'll take Notre Dame. Yeah. He was right, Bob was. <laughs> he picked the wrong one. And of course, that was former Sooner coach Gary Gibbs. And actually, literally, the first time I was ever on the air as a KFOR employee was as an extra for football predictions. I was Hans Brinker, who was helping Bob oh. make predictions. We don't have that video, but unfortunately. This is, this is one where he, he convinced me he was singing opera as he sang his answers. Take a look. <laughs> Oklahoma State of Missouri. Oh, state of Rapal Tiger in the spot of Vatican, I think I understand. <laughs> I think he was from one of the, the music schools around here, we the opera schools, maybe OCU. We sure do miss Bob, and oh, you two absolutely. had just tremendous chemistry, which made it so work so well. We had such a good time. It was just fabulous. Yeah. It was wonderful. And I remember the time we brought a gorilla out here very quickly. <laughs> Tell that story real quick. It's funny. Well, the premise was that even a monkey could beat Bob, and so we had the Oklahoma City Zoo bring a little gorilla out here as a baby. And so it was out here, and Bob jerked or something, and all of a sudden, the gorilla bit him. And the zoo people said, oh, no, oh, no, tetanus shot. Somebody arranged for a tetanus shot. And Bob said, well, I think I've had one. They said, not you, the gorilla. <laughs> it's for the so, gorilla. Yeah, Bob's face was just crestfallen. <laughs> they were more worried about the gorilla than they were worried about him. That is classic Bob. That yeah, was good stuff. He was a great man. <laughs> yeah. Now, to all of our friends out there, the tough part of the show is coming up after this break. Some final thoughts, very important that my buddy wants to pass along. That's next. You know, many of you have been with me from the start. We've comforted each other and stood together during the hard times, the tornadoes, the recession of the 1980s, and of course, the bombing. And we celebrated the good times, just like a family. And since I consider you part of my family, I want to tell you that I'll be leaving in mid-December. This wasn't a rash decision. In fact, I told the folks here at the station three years ago, wanted to give them the opportunity to find someone who could continue the Channel 4 tradition of excellence, and they did. She's an Oklahoman. She's a seasoned journalist. She thinks it's important that you receive both sides of every story. I know you'll welcome Jolene Cheney as warmly as you did me. So what am I going to do? Well, if I'm lucky, I've inherited my dad's DNA gene for longevity. And if that's the case, I have another couple of decades to contribute to our state. I intend to take a few months to reboot, and then I'll make decisions about the future. I never thought I'd find myself anchoring news for 40 years, so I'm sure I'll be equally surprised and challenged by whatever comes next. What I do know is that I'm as excited about the future as I am grateful for the past. Sweetie, I know she, folks, she hates shining the light on herself. I don't care for it much. This is not her <laughs> cup of tea. She is the hump. For somebody who's done so much 
that she has. She never talks about herself, never talks about her awards, is the humblest person you'll ever meet. But thank you for letting us shine the light on your incredible career tonight. Well, I appreciate that very much. And I think that this television station has been a fabulous, fabulous opportunity, and I'm most grateful for the opportunity they gave me. And I appreciate you so much for sticking with me these 40 years. And I'll be here through December 15th, so you still have time to get me a gift <laughs> for Christmas. You can call it Christmas. You can I'm call working it on want. it. Okay. I'm working on it. Thank you so much, Linda. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the 19 years I've been able to be a part of this. And with that, we bid you adieu this evening, and thank you for being a part of this special celebration tonight. Good night.